On today's episode of Photo Walks, we're going to visit two of Southern California's most popular island communities, Santa Catalina, just 22 miles off the Los Angeles coast, and then the tiny island of Balboa, which is actually part of Newport Beach, but most people get there via ferry. We'll begin first on Catalina Island in the city of Avalon. It's photo walk time, come on. So I'm Jefferson Graham, I'm a lifelong photographer, writer, and video maker. The goal of the Photo Walks channel is to bring you to great places like this and show you how, when, and where to get great shots. On this island, it's all about killer sunrises and maybe killer sunsets, maybe. Stay tuned, I'll tell you more. To get to Catalina, most people travel by boat from the mainland, a short one-hour cruise. Okay, we are here, we're off the boat, so uh, let's see. Why don't we start the photo walk here? Because it's the first thing you're gonna see when you step into town, right? The first phase of the walk is actually under a mile. Google claims it'll take you about an hour, but I've got a few stops in between for you. It'll take a little longer. As always, be sure to check out our blog for more detailed mapping information to this episode blog.jeffersongram.com. And remember, most of Avalon is a pedestrian walkway with hardly any cars. On the island, most folks don't have access to them, only golf carts. But before we start walking, two quick things. First, take a look at some of the photo highlights of the island that you are set to see. And secondly, a little background on Catalina itself. Catalina's modern history goes back to 1919 when William Wrigley Jr. of Wrigley Chewing Gum fame bought the island and began developing it as a playground for Hollywood and Los Angeles. Today, most of the commercial activities on the island are still controlled by the Wrigleys. The family's Catalina Island Company owns many of the top restaurants and hotels on Avalon, and in the 1970s, the Wrigleys deeded 88% of the land to a nonprofit called the Catalina Conservancy, which is where you turn to for biking and hiking permits and the like. It's also where you must turn to for approval to fly your drone on the island. So the island is home to about 4,400 residents and a whole lot of tourists from over there, the mainland, as in the LA area. So our photo walk is gonna take you from one end of town to the other, down Crescent Avenue, about two miles down to that iconic casino that is the symbol of Catalina Island. You know, this one. As we head into town, we will see a main street known for restaurants, clothing shops, and places that would love to sell you a drink or trinkets. Then add some fun side streets with really cute beach cottages, the obligatory buffalo shot, boating and fishing motif, and you've got Catalina. Add some backcountry scenery as well, which we'll pick up later when we explore the other side of the island. In Avalon itself, the fun is getting off the beaten path, like taking hikes up the hill or perhaps just relaxing by the beach. Our first major stop is to that majestic casino, the focal part of the island since it opened for business back in 1929. The largest building on Catalina and its most visible landmark, well, the casino was the first circular building at its time. An historical note, it's the first movie theater built from the ground up to support the newest of art forms, talkies. Catalina, of course, has been a popular Hollywood playground for years. It's only 26 miles away from L.A., after all. Buster Keaton made the classic The Navigator on the island. Charlie Chaplin and John Wayne regularly vacationed there. And Marilyn Monroe even lived in Avalon for a time during World War II. And speaking of Hollywood, those eye-catching Art Deco murals were created by John Gabriel Beckman, who went on to design movie sets for such film classics as Maltese Falcon and Casablanca. The Art Deco Mediterranean Revival building is 11 stories high with only two floors. 
With the 2,000 square foot ballroom upstairs and the 1,100 seat Avalon Theater downstairs. Sadly, the theater is only open now for tours or special events. Along with long walks, many visitors to the island often turn to renting golf carts to see more of the island. It gives you the flexibility that you can do the tour on your own. You, we call it uh, freestyle touring because you can stop, you can take pictures. Uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility to enjoy the island. Okay, and how much do they cost? $50 an hour for a four passenger or $70 an hour for a six passenger. Let's take a ride. You know everybody here, right? Everybody knows everybody. Yeah. That's good and bad, right? Yeah, you got that right. Summertime in a busy day like July 4, we can have 10 to 12,000 people here. So very different. And throughout the summer, we probably have an average 4,000 to 5,000 just visitors. For photo walks here in Avalon, this is a must. There are so many great shots that you can get in a golf cart that you could not get on foot. For starters, it will take you out of town if you get a little tired walking up those hills. And secondly, if you're shooting video, I love the movement from the golf cart slowly passing me by. How do we make it happen? We attached my GoPro to a golf cart and my friend Conrado drove right by me. So when you're here, you only have so many sunrises and sunsets to play with sunrise now. Big question is, where? Did you go up on a hill? Over there? Over there? On the beach? That's a big question, uh, particularly if you only have limited time. What did I do? I conferred with many locals who told me that my best shot was standing right on the sand with the sun coming over the dock. And what about sunsets? In Avalon, there is no place to watch a sunset because we're on the east side of the the uh, island and the sun obviously sets on the west. But have no fear, we will be catching our Catalina sunset in just a minute. There's two definitive shots of Avalon overview, the boats in the harbor, everything looking really cool. One of them is right up this hill. To get that first view shot, walk up the hill and follow the curve and you will end up on Chimes Tower Road. Just a little bit north of the Chimes Tower, Look back towards the water and you will get that killer shot of the harbor. The other great overview shot is on the other side of the island from the deck of the Inn of Mount Ada. It's a trek to get up the hill. I recommend a golf cart for this. The former William Wrigley Mansion is now a B&B. &B. It happens to have the best view in town from the deck and you know if you don't feel like stopping by there for lunch or drinks, well, you can always pull the golf cart over and set up right here at the Buena Vista Scenic Overlook. It's right on Wrigley Road. This is the iconic shot seen all the time on Los Angeles television as the backdrop for the weather. Or best of all, an iconic time lapse. Just don't forget your tripod for the shot as you can't hold your hand steady long enough to capture it. And now for part two, as I promised, the back country, my new friend, Kristen, we're going up to Ballast Point, which she says is, I'm gonna come right over here. Tell us about Ballast Point. The absolute best place to watch the sunset on Catalina. Okay, let's find out. Yeah. While downtown Avalon is car free, some people actually get to own a car on the island, including the Catalina Island Company, which happens to be Kristen's employer. There is a 25-year wait to get vehicles, so stand in line. But if you want to see the interior and you don't know anyone with a car, buses will take you there, or you can hop a boat to get to the other side. Tell everybody the magic of this side of the island, because most people just go to Avalon. Yeah, I'd say most people go to Avalon, and that's people what people equate to as Catalina Island. But, uh, Two Harbors is just, it's rustic, it's peaceful, you know, one bar, one restaurant, one hotel. Oh, so we're standing on top of Ballast Point right now and we're gonna watch the most amazing sunset, I hope. If you kind of look around, you feel like you're on top of the world and that there's no place else you could be. 
You have beautiful, you know, the beautiful coastline down there. Um, you see two harbors down there in Cat Harbor, and you really feel like you're kind of at the end here. And we have to remind people that when you come to Avalon, you're not going to get a sunset shot unless you have wheels. True. Uh, unfortunately, you, you can't quite get here unless you have put on a good pair of hiking boots and, you know, hike the Trans Catalina Trail. And that's several days. Several days, yes. <laughs> We're actually in the Two Harbors section because that's the side that gets the sunset all year round. Yeah, so uh, right down there is Cat Harbor, and so we're on the back side of the island, whereas, you know, if you're in Avalon or Two Harbors, you're um, on the front side of the island that faces the mainland. Okay, the sun is almost down. Let's go catch it. Beyond amazing sunsets, there's wildlife galore past Avalon as well, most notably the bison, which were brought to Catalina in 1924 for the production of a film, Zane Gray's The Vanishing American. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome aboard the cyclone for our trip to Two Harbors. Let me show you a little bit more of Two Harbors with footage I picked up from a quick cyclone boat trip. Now, it really is as rustic as Kristen says, more of a hidden island paradise with ultra clear water, little commerce, and plenty of space to dock your boat. I also toured the interior with Jessica from the Catalina Conservancy, who showed us some cool backcountry hikes and photo spots and explained what you get to see when you do leave Avalon. We have 42,000 acres of open space and for people to explore, as well as 200 miles of roads and trails. So we have hiking, we have mountain biking, there are all sorts of activities that you can do here as you explore the nature. And you might even catch a glimpse of an endemic species like the Catalina Island Fox or one of our visitors like the bison. My favorite hike on the island is to Ben Weston Beach. So it's just, just a mile and you go and you hike in and I have never been on that beach with another person um, because it's just so isolated, but an easy, just about a mile hike and really beautiful photos and nature. My favorite of our spots, our lunch break at the nostalgic Catalina Island Airport in the Sky. So we came to Airport in the Sky because it has incredible views. Here you get a really nice view of the vistas um, and sometimes you can even see bison. The airport um, officially opened to the general public in October of 1959. The airport does get a lot of visitors, I think just because it's such a unique place and it's really cool to see the airplanes landing and taking off. We actually have a few shuttles that go to the airport. The Wildlands Express goes to the airport and it's a popular spot on our natural sled eco tours as well. Photo tip time. Here's number one. You can sleep when you get home. The best light here on the island is really early in the morning or an hour before sunset. That's when you're going to get your best shots. The rest of the day, you can relax. Portraits of people during the day in bright sunlight looks pretty rough with heavy shadows on their faces. Allow me to demonstrate. Remember those shadows under my eyes in the bright sunlight? Look, I look good. Soft shade does the trick. Of course, the great thing about digital is it doesn't cost you anything, so you can afford to experiment. Back in the film days, you would be lucky if you got three great shots out of a 36 exposure roll of film. Now, if you can get 10, 20, 30 great, fantastic shots on the island, you're doing wonderful. Well, I hate to take a bite to Avalon, but it's that time we have a ferry to catch and another island as well. So I hope you have lots of memory left over and your batteries are charged because we're about to go on another photo walk.
on another ferry. This one's rather smaller, wouldn't you say? Here we are again on another island, that little sliver of Newport Beach called Balboa. Like Catalina, it's a classic California beach town where time has stood still. Let's take a look around. Beach cottages to get away for the summer, long walks by the water, a ferry ride to the amusement park, and those world famous Balboa bars and frozen bananas. So I'll have one chocolate banana and then the Balboa bar with everything on it, okay? So if you watch the TV show Arrested Development, you know about the banana stand that was on Balboa Island and was supposedly right here. It was actually filmed in Marina del Rey, but it doesn't matter. They're fantastic everywhere. And you know what? The greatest photo walk taste treat. Doesn't get any better than this, folks. Mmm. Logistically, Balboa Island is halfway between Los Angeles and San Diego in the heart of Orange County with Huntington Beach to the north and Laguna Beach to the south. Just to make it clear, Balboa Peninsula is on land, a section of Newport Beach where you will find the 100-year-plus-old pavilion, amusement park, boating and ferry services, and more. The tiny, man-made Balboa Island is right across the water, and it really is an island. But you can still drive right up from Newport off the coast highway, right over the bridge, or take the ferry from the peninsula. Our photo walk takes us from the Balboa Pavilion in Newport Beach to the ferry. We fork over a dollar and a quarter for a ride across, which takes us to the island and South Bay Front Street. We'll walk by the water in those magnificent seaside homes, just 0.7 tenths of a mile to Marine Avenue, which is where you will find the nostalgic downtown. But trust me, this is really easy. Marine, all the way down there, take a left or right, walk on the water can't get lost. You're on an island. Remember to check out our blog, blog.jeffersongram.com, for more detailed mapping information. Balboa is home to about 3,500 full-time residents, a seasonal getaway for those who think and act rich since the early 1900s. Homes today can cost anywhere from $2 million to $7 million dollars. It's kind of like our West Coast Nantucket. Beyond ice cream, Balboa is all about old-timey Marine Avenue, the boardwalk, and the beach. Let's look at some definitive, iconic Balboa Island shots. This island is so small. We're gonna walk it together. It's only 1.7 miles. I'm gonna do every block. The good news is I got the GoPro. I'm gonna speed everything up. It's not gonna seem that long. And the main point is it's photo walkable, folks. I was joined on this photo walk by my friends Chris and Tanya, who live nearby. On Balboa Island, I'm betting that you'll want to take a great selfie, but the harsh afternoon shadows will be playing havoc with your face. Here's our best photo walk tip. The problem with shooting portraits in midday is the sun is really strong and can put really bad shadows around your eyes, make you look like a raccoon. I've got a great fix. It's pretty much everywhere. You know those magazine racks? Pick up one of these, they're free. Get a friend to hold the magazine over your head like this and it will cover the shadows. Let me show you. Once again, just get a passerby to hold the magazine directly over your head to block the sun and then start snapping your selfie. Here's our before and after, what do you think?
I'm still working on the Balboa bar, and I haven't even touched the banana, so I got a lot of things to do. I got to say goodbye. I want to thank you for watching. I'd love to see your photos. Please share them with me on Twitter, where I'm at Jefferson Graham. And hey, everybody, I'll see you on the next photo walk. Bye-bye.